I am glad to welcome all of you at the, our investment round table. More than 300 billion have been invested in our economy in the years of independence. Our successes allowed us to become uh, the largest and most competitive economy in the region. So it's good to be back in North Sultan at a critical juncture in its unfolding development. This moment in history certainly seems to be critical. Vast opportunities are opening up as Kazakhstan prepares for a future that carries strong echoes of its past. attraction will focus on um, both uh, new sectors and the traditional sectors just like oil and gas downstream mining metallurgy food industry we are attracting and we are today signing a new contracts with a big TNCs this is not only FDI not only creation of jobs this is also a transfer of technology and also we focus on the new sectors like information and communication technology we've discussing and we've agreed with several big companies implementation of 5G in Kazakhstan, which will change the structure of the economy also. Kazakhstan is uh, mostly mineral resources driven uh, economy, used to be driven economy, but the world is changing, the world is moving to digital, and I think the potential of Kazakhstan to, to drive this innovation in the region, yeah? And to drive this innovation, you need to understand what data is the next oil. What we do with the 5G networks that we build together with our uh, private customer like uh, Beyond, or with the Kazakh uh, Telecom on the government side, will be creating the possibility for this uh, new digital era. And with that network investment, we believe uh, it's a platform to continue the growth. We're bringing the latest uh, and cutting edge technology to Kazakhstan agriculture. We're leapfrogging um, the previous standards and, and because the Kazakh government and um, the industry here is so open and inviting, um, they've done investments in cellular technology, um, they've done investments in infrastructure, and they'll be doing more to help us, uh, help them in the long run. This is still a place where, you know, the enormous amounts of liquidity we have around the world are finding opportunities for investment and really making uh, good returns, but at the same time also really creating value for the customers here, but also creating value for the society. I've watched the growth of Nur Sultan as a capital, uh, but very importantly, I had a chance to talk to the governor when he had this gleam in his eye about starting the AIFC. When the investors decided to, let's say, to, uh, to get uh, on the ground and to, to start to work, they should to choose jurisdiction. And here we have uh, two choices. One jurisdiction is the traditional jurisdiction of uh, uh, Kazakhstan, and the second is based on uh, common law jurisdiction. Through common law jurisdiction, there is a certain advantages. They can access, get access to the international arbitration center, to the court, to the stock exchange, which we based on NASDAQ technologies we create like, uh, together with the Shanghai Stock Exchange, access to the liquidity. And also part of the Astana International Financial Center is a fund for uh, direct investment. So uh, with a capitalization, $1 billion. So we not just can a registered company, but we also can invest to this particular project if they will co-invest with us. I think Kazakhstan certainly would benefit from having a diversified economy. One easy way to diversification is to bring in new companies, to buy some of these assets and to enhance these assets and on the top of those sectors, you develop other services, other you know, products along the way. It's very difficult for, for governments to, to give up uh, control over strategic companies, uh, but ultimately that's a process they have to go through. And um, I would argue that there've been mixed results in the past, but certainly Kazatom Prom in the past, um, more recently, about six months ago, has been a big success story. And as investors, we want to see more privatized companies 
uh, more listing on the on the stock exchanges, and I have the ability um, as investor to to be more exposed to to Central Asia and Kazakhstan in particular. From Singapore, normally at the moment take more than a day. Eh? There is no direct flight, there is no quick turnaround. So it is something that very hard to convince the Singaporean or the people in Singapore. But to me, I told myself I must come here by myself. Really spend enough time to understand the country, the people, at the same time to look at the opportunity. For many people from our part of the world, the word stun is tend to be actually a, a wrong impression. People think we are actually in the cases like Pakistan or actually uh, Afghanistan. But my decision to come over to Kazakhstan is to tell ourselves that weather is the opportunity. So the last time, first time I met them was in November last year in Singapore with the last Prime Minister. I was invited to come to this country. So I make a concerted effort to bring my staff to come here in January. We spent 12 days, cover three cities, uh, Amati, No Southern and also Shinken. And we were able to meet a couple of uh, many of the leaders in terms of trying to encourage us to come over here to invest. of uh, uh, foreign businessmen that uh, not only businessmen but uh, state employees uh, well-known financial expert economists uh, that uh, especially arrived to our country to participate this event uh, and uh, of course that uh, you know, there are a lot of uh, opportunities to sign a contracts uh, that uh, more than 40 contracts for several uh, billions and that uh, dollars has, have been signed uh, during this uh, uh, event but uh, mostly that uh, I appreciate and highly appreciate that, that this is a kind of a step uh, uh, towards expanding knowledges about Kazakhstan and uh, it would attract uh, much more investors to come here and to show them that, that their perspectives uh, to do business here.